pace and uh, you already sense a different kind of uh, occasion here to normal there's a lot of media presence here today a lot of people here from national broadcasters from uh, national newspapers national news organizations and so uh, good to see out on the pitch just a couple of moments ago George Alakobi having gone round and milked the applause from pretty much every area of the ground and a warm embrace with Mick McCarthy who was his old manager when he was at Wolves and uh, Alakobi of course had a long and distinguished playing career and, uh, after coming to England from Cameroon Wolves possibly the club where he's uh, remembered most yeah, fondly yeah and uh, I believe he scored a goal for them against Manchester United at one point in his career at Old Trafford no less as well wasn't yeah. it and uh, Mick McCarthy was here looking pretty much identical to how he looked when he was George Alakobi's manager actually yeah. which is going back a few years about uh, 13 I think it was since Mick McCarthy was there but he is here today the, uh, the scene here I say it's a full house today there's also a number of people watching from the park outside so uh, Stevenage trying to clear the ball only goes as far as Sam Bone Reynolds will knock that one down it's intercepted by Stevenage and the number 23 Lewis Thompson will come away with it Stevenage now trying to build something in midfield Forster Kasky will play that one down the right hand side good touch there by the Stevenage attackers a shout for handball against Thompson from the home fans it's not given by the officials and now Wildin will try and play it back. Cross goes into the area, headed clear by George Fowler. It's going to be a shot from Forster Kasky, and that'll go wide for a Maidstone goal kick. Right by Maidstone manager George Alakobi. In fact, it's taken relatively quickly. It's thrown down the left hand side. Corn will intercept that for Maidstone. Kipriano is uh, being chased by Reed. Eventually he manages to get it forward. Maidstone under a bit of pressure here and they've given it away. There could be a chance here for Lewis Thompson to get towards the edge of the area, but it's good defending by Sam Bone. So Maidstone a bit nervous, giving the ball away again. Chance on the outside of the area. Again, this time it's intercepted by Fowler. Great little bit of play by him. Ball is chipped forward for Wonjar Smith. And Wonjar Smith has been brought down. And uh, referee saying it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. Waves play on. Headed forward by Sweeney. As far as Thompson, Maidstone get the ball back. For a Maidstone throwing just inside Stevenish territory. Here's Sam Bone for the Stones. Kipriano, left footed, raking ball across the uh, far side of the field. He's looking for Soul. He's found him. Terrific ball that by Kipriano. His Soul on the edge of the area. Goes to the byline, gets to the byline, puts it across oh. and just over the head of Lamar Reynolds on the left hand side. Good work by Liam Soul there, just beating his man and putting the ball in, but just. Evading that head of Lebar Reynolds there on the back stick. After a foul by Reed, and it'll be taken by Kovalan, who boots that right footed downfield, looking for Barkley Agipong, who wins the header, flicks it on to Wonjao Smith. Reynolds will pick it up. Reynolds works it to Wonjao Smith, back to Barkley Agipong. Agipong gets round his man, gets to the byline, puts the cross towards the far side of the area. Corn rising to heading, it might fall for Wonjao Smith, it does, and it's just wide. The absence of the, the cup tied Matt Rush and of course Levi Amanchi whose goals were so crucial getting Maidstone to this stage here's Korn with the corner short to Wanja Smith little back flick by him back to Korn crossed into the area towards Reynolds and Reynolds forces a good save there by Ashby Hammond and the first clear cut chance of the afternoon goes to Maidstone Nigel yep good build up play there by Maidstone yeah, I think it's fair to say he's let a couple go early on, this referee. And uh, that was certainly one of them. He has given a foul. It's uh, floated into the area. Sweeney just about heads it clear. It's going to get to Cipriano on the left-hand side here. Cipriano lays it into Reynolds. Reynolds has uh, rather bought a foul off Sweeney. And Sweeney is going to get booked here. Sweeney's protesting. And... I wonder if Reynolds realised that that had just got a little bit beyond him. I think so. Talking of uh, playoff uh, final winners, Perry Ajani, of course, scored the winner for Salford when they won promotion to the Football League. I did, yes. Well, it seems like Salford are an established Football League side now. It's not that long ago that they were playing here. Here's Sam Corn from Maidstone into the area, to the far post. Reynolds oh. with the header and he just can't keep it on target. It was just getting away from him a bit there for uh, Lamar Reynolds. And there's an injury to a Maidstone player. 
On the far side, it looks like it's Liam Soul who is down. He's looked the most likely to unlock this Maidstone defence. Ball bounces to Barkley Agipol. And then there could be a chance for Reynolds to break down the left-hand side. He's got Wilden in front of him. He's going to try and get past him. There's a bit of a push there, I thought. So, ball is cleared as far as Bone. Bone will knock that into the area. So, it's cleared by Stephen Inch, headed back towards one Jao Smith by Sam Bone. Hooked clear by the number eight, Forster Kasky. Bouncing awkwardly for Pierre Gianni. Clears it as far as Bone. Great touch by Bone to uh, bring down the crowd and ask him to shoot with Kipriano. He might think about doing that. He does shoot. Hits Dan Sweeney in the stomach. as a rather optimistic shout for hand. Ball goes up from the fans behind the Elvis end. And the ball eventually goes out of play for a Maidstone corner. Yep, the second corner for Maidstone in this match. You can see Stephen Inge's class, can't you, Nigel? But you wouldn't say that Maidstone have been out-fought or out-battled. No, uh, so far. Yeah, yeah, like you say, they're just that little bit half a yard. You can see the class, but... He would have played all his Maidstone career with nobody watching him. That's right, apart exactly. Apart on the live stream. Exactly that, yeah. So the ball is punted downfield. Piajani heads it as far as Sam Corn. Barkley Agapol picks it up. Bone now running into the danger area. Shoots Ooh. from the range and... Uh, Took a deflection, so it's going to be a corner. Now, Steve Evans is complaining about something on the far side. I think it's noticeable that none of his players are complaining. And so, Maidstone have a corner here. More or less exactly the same place it was five minutes ago. Yeah, we're uh, in the final minute of normal time in the first half. corner comes in, goes towards the far post, it's uh, fumbled by the keeper and it's going to go out of play for a corner on the far side. It's the right-hand side of midfield as Maidstone attack the town end in this first half. It's uh, two minutes of added time at the end of the first half here. Thrown forward to Wonja Smith in the area, Wonja Smith goes down, Bok Yagamon, there's a penalty to Maidstone. Penalty for Maidstone. Well, it's been given for the second defence. Uh, one Jao Smith went down. Didn't see a lot in that one. Barkley Agipum has gone down. And the referee has pointed to the penalty spot. Corn. Not letting it phase him. Yeah, he was pretty much going to pick that ball up straight away there, didn't he? And so, Maidstone with a penalty. Sam Corn steps up and... Yes! Maidstone United won, Stephen Ishdil, Sam Korn with a penalty in the FA Cup here in stoppage time at the end of the first half. And it's 1-0 to Maidstone in the third round of the FA Cup. Gallagher erupts here. And Stephen is just look a little bit punch drunk at the moment. And I think what's surprising, Nigel, is the fact that We've only seen it once with our own eyes. It didn't look the strongest of penalty claims to me. Back four, makes down a plan today. Sam Corn now pushing that little bit more forward. Ball headed up in the air from the throw-in. Apaya wins it back, but it bounces awkwardly. Reynolds will knock that one forward, but he won't be able to keep possession there. It was Sweeney that made the interception, and now Stephen Hitcher into the area. Stephen he should score, but it's just... Tip wide by Lucas Kovalan, a fantastic save by him from Reed. Fantastic save there by Kovalan, that's one of his wits about him. Just a uh, toe poke there really from uh, the Steve New striker. And, but just uh, Kovalan, as I say, had his wits about him and just parried it away. Here comes the corner for Stevenich. Deep into the area, it's headed down, it's cleared off the line by Sam Bone. And Kovalan falls on it and it's risky and it looks like we're going to see a change for Maidstone. It looks like Chi Zenalim is going to come on fairly shortly as so Kipriano makes a bit of a hash of that but recovers well. Chips it into Sam Korn. It might fall for one Jao Smith. It might fall for Sam Korn. It's oh. good defending in the end by Pierre Gianni. Just for a second it looked like it might sit up for Sam Korn. No, nope, it's a free kick to Maidstone. <laughs> 
behind the stand. It is absolutely rocking right now in the Elvis end. Looks like there's about 500 people jumping up and down all at once. Now Mason have got a free kick on the right-hand side of the area. Probably about 30 yards from goal. You would think it's too far to shoot from here. And certainly Sam Corn's free kicks so far this season haven't offered a great deal of encouragement to suggest that he'll shoot. There's a two-man wall there. It's a fair amount of the goal to aim at if he does fancy a dig from here. And here comes Corn floating that towards the back side of the area. Might fall for Sam Bone. Sam Bone shoots, but it's charged down. I thought that was on target. But uh, Stevenish can counter now. And Mason are in trouble here. There's two against one. And uh, I think that was offside, but the, play, the flag has stayed down. It could be a chance for a great save by Lucas Kovalan. It was Kane Hemmings who was the player who was uh, breaking free. And Sam Bone has been booked for something, I think, that he said to the referee there. Um, I've got to say, I thought Hemmings was about half a yard offside. And that was a great chance for Stevenage. The flag stayed down. So a frantic couple of minutes here. All stemming from that shot from Sam Bone, which was charged down. And now there ah. could be a chance for Stevenage. It should be the equaliser here, surely. It's Reed into the area, squares it for White, and White will shoot over the bar. Absolute sixes and sevens at the back there for Maidstone. And Stevenage... Now Kipriano and Greenwich rather getting in each other's way there. Steven is getting possession back. And uh, here's Freeman for the visitors, rolling it out wide to Wildin. Back to Freeman. Freeman forward, intercepted by Bone, who is having a really good game in the Maidstone midfield. Boys, chipped out of play, a cheer goes up as it's headed by somebody in the main stand here. Two balls on the field now, so there's going to be a little bit of a break in play. It's when the ball goes out of play that Mason are relieving the pressure at the moment. They're not really keeping it for any length of time. There's a free kick to Stevenage, just in front of the Mason bench. It's chipped towards the edge of the area, heading down. Could be a chance here, and it's going to hit the bar, and it's been cleared off the line. Somehow, Mason have got away with one there. Ball was played into the area, it's hit the crossbar. It's one of those where there'd been VAR here, might have been interesting. Yeah. So, as it is, there was no real complaint from Stevenage. Headed forward by a pyre. And uh, Fowler with the flicked header, it might fall for Hemmings here. Hemmings has had to track back, giving it to Burns. Nice quick one two between the two of them. Plays it back to Wildin. Plays it all the way back to Piagiani. Piagiani is intercepted by Sol. One Jao Smith, and one Jao Smith has been brought down, has he? And the referee is going to give a free kick. He's going to give a yellow card to um, Piagiani. One Jao Smith rather theatrically protesting about the decision, thinking it probably should have been a red. I think he possibly lost it by the time it was broken. Yes, I've. I've Four. So, four minutes for Maidstone to hold out here. You may have heard the announcement. It might break for White on the left-hand side. The ball is knocked forward. Fowler is after it. Fowler is going to try and buy a free kick. The Fowler does buy a free kick. And another huge cheer goes up. It's very clever, that, by George Fowler. It was Fowler. very clever. But the ball has gone out of play for a Stevenage throw-in. So Stevenage are going to get the chance to mount at least one more attack here. By my calculations, we have 70 seconds of time remaining. Fowler with a header. Thompson. Back to Weldon. Into the final minute. Stevenage on the edge of the area. It might fall for uh, McDonald. McDonald puts a cross in. Bone heads it clear. Apaya has got to try and get underneath that without giving away a free kick. He's done so. Burns is coming after it. Good strong challenge by Brown now. Brown can crush that one forward. 
But all Brown could do, because he doesn't have an outlet there, is just give it to Ashby Hammond. Every clearance now is being cheered like a goal. But Ashby Hammond is going to pick that one up. So Ashby Hammond will knock that one forward. Mason looking to win the header here. Corn is just going to have to hack that one downfield. Listen to the cheers as the ball goes into the corner. Stephen is going to run out of time if they're not careful here. Ashby Hammond puts that one downfield. Bone underneath it. Sam Corn looking up in the air. Yeah! Yes! Unbelievable! Oh! <laughs> makers made Stoke United into the full throw for the first time in their history. They've never done it before. Ladies and gentlemen, I am 50 years of age. I have never seen Leicester United get into the fourth round of the FA Cup. I never thought I would. I honestly never thought I would, and they've done it here today. The final score, Maidstone United won, Stevenage nil. There are absolute scenes out there on the pitch. Nigel, oh. how the hell do you sum that up? Well, I'll tell you sum it up. Oh, it was a proper back to the wall performance there in the second half. The hit made, uh, Steven Hitch hit the crossbar. Matt Coughlin made a couple of good one on one saves. That little bit of luck that we said on commentary that you need to win games like this. We had players down. We had, at one point at the end there, we had virtually every player that was on there was a defender. You know, it was a proper back to the wall performance, but it's there. Maystone have done it, it's 1 0. We're in the full throw of the FA Cup. Soak it in, Maystone fans. We had a bit of luck there. You have we to had to, we, we do. A bit of luck. But you need that little bit of luck. Do you care? No, no not, not a jot. Slightly. The um, history books will show that Maystone United beat Stevenage for the second time in the FA Cup, 1 0. And uh, just to put that into a bit of perspective, so in all the years when Maystone were considered one of the top non-league teams in the country throughout the 80s under Barry Watling and Bill Williams known as the Manchester United of non-league football at the time only slightly ironically it has to be said they never took us to the fourth round of the FA Cup no once did we get that far we got close on a couple of occasions we gave Charlton a scare we gave Sheffield United a scare we've never ever got this far